Hello and welcome to Minor Plays, a random game. Let's go. This one is Mongolia, which I think is a great map to play. And I have never seen it in multiplayer. I'm sure it has been in multiplayer, I've just never seen it. So once again, same settings, random civilizations. I'm playing as Banish. Green is the Goth, the King Warrior, and red is Koreans as the John the Great. Um, it's on hard, as you can see in the top left, and there's those scores. Uh, my visibility is limited, that's all I can see. Now, Mongolia, the main thing about the scenery in Mongolia are all the cliffs. So, I tried to scout out a decent base to see where it would be good to wall, and I found some decent ones here, so I've set up a palisade. I made the palisade go this way because obviously I want control of this gold here. And then build things here. I mean, there's these places I can just build a gate. That's all I need to do. And then build a wall up here, another wall up here that I can put a gate in. And then I build a gate here because I'm already in the feudal age. So I've got a decent amount of space around here. So you want to think carefully about where it would be best to put towers. And, you know, for example, if I put a tower here, then any enemies that come through here will be attacked at a slight detriment because of that tower. Now in terms of resources there's a fair fair amount of wood around, not too great, but if you make sure you walled off nicely using the cliffs as a natural wall, then you will end up with about you know a decent amount of wood. I've got plenty of stone here, is that four yeah it's four because it's on a wall. Um I've got some go sorry, go gold, stone, some more gold and building up some houses. It's got another town centre out. And so yes, the resources are similar to quite a few other maps. The main difference really is just the uh, the fact that there's cliffs everywhere. And yes, cliffs might be a good thing because you can get from, you know, you can attack over here with ranged units, but it's a bad thing because you know, for example, if, if this place is getting attacked here, if I want to flank him, I have to go around quite a bit. And here comes a castle. Gosh, I'm just thinking the amount of time that I played these ga uh, these random matches. You know, I probably had to restart each one at average about three times. And then, if you think think about um, you know the amount of time it's taken to actually complete each one. You know, it, it's near enough two hours on this thing, so it'd probably be about one and a half hours in real time. It was a lot of fun to do, but it's just quite time consuming. Now fortunately in Spanish I get missionaries, so they're essentially monks, just slightly less range, but they can move much quicker. And it's annoying that missionaries can't carry relics, so you do have to create monks to get relics, which I've got two of, and then you have to create missionaries otherwise to sort them out, so I've got Roger Conquistadores there. I think I had these. I think these villagers were down in health. Now, one thing I find so annoying is when you wall with Palisade and then you want to wall with um, stone walls, sometimes you can destroy the Palisade and put the stone wall in, but you have to either destroy one Palisade and build one stone wall and then destroy another Palisade and build another stone wall. But, you know, that could take ages. Or you could just destroy all the palisade and try and create the wall as quickly as you can. Because if you if you end up um, leaving a big open space, of course the enemy can come in and they can destroy that. Uh, you know, destroy your base. Now the enemy here, they've done you know, a fairly decent war. I know the AI and whatnot, but even so, you, they used the, the walls effectively, uh, the cliffs effectively. Uh, let's see. So I, I mainly get attacked up here. Um, yeah, sorry, as I was saying, the palisade walls. For example, you know, here's a good example. There's some palisade walls behind there, and there's some behind here. And to get rid of them, you either have to allow the enemy to destroy them, or somehow be able to click them effectively, which is something I can't do. Oh yeah, here, I'm using cliffs to my advantage to take out these people much easier and there we go just gone down like that and i've got enough conquistadors to last me 
so yeah, Palisade Wars behind here. I'll be able to. Ooh, loads of videos. I'll be able to. Um, but I won't be able to just join them easily. And however, if I was here and I built the Palisade Wars and then a Stone Wars behind, that wouldn't be a problem at all. Now I need fortified walls should be a good thing to have. And fortunately, the enemy are fighting here as well. One thing I could do. That would be quite funny actually. It should send a villager all the way around here and build a tower on this little spot here. And I got one by the tower. Ooh, there we go. Fortified walls. There was another little spot here that I could have built a tower on, but it's, what's the point? Now, this is the only unfortunate thing about this point. I had loads of idle villagers, because I don't think I could actually send them through this gap. And there we go. I think I. There we go. Send them to this gold here only to find it's been used. So, I tried to find some more gold, and I tried to build a town centre up here, but I think all of these people, yeah, all of these villagers died, unfortunately. But that would have been great, to have all of that you know, stone and a little bit of gold that's there. And here we go, I'm making an attack, and I decided it would be best with Hussars, and at this point, I, I don't really realise about the skirmish and pikemen costing only wooden food. And when, the moment I realised that, which uh, I'm, I think I used them a bit more in the later games, um, and I, I start, to use, start to use them a lot in lots of um, uh, multiplayer matches, and I, I just didn't realise about them, and I can't believe I didn't realise about them. So anyway, just digging down various buildings, because they're goths, I don't really have to worry about walls too much, and if I do, they're just palisade walls. I don't think you can convert walls, actually. That'd be very sneaky to get a monk to convert a wall, like here, and then send through. Ah, interesting. If I get rid of this... Actually, no, that wouldn't be too good. Maybe if I walled it off a bit. I could get that gold there. Anyway, let's go back to the main battlefront. Got loads of hussars, um, 95 health, 11 attack, and 3, 6 armor. Which is very nice indeed. And have I only got one trebuchet? No, here we go, some more trebuchets. What are you going to attack? You're going to attack town center. Good. Good. Any other buildings? I think, oh wait. I have a feeling. There we go, yeah. I actually converted that archery range. That's probably one of the first buildings I have ever converted. And there we go, there's King Wally defeated. Now because I'm getting attacked from this front majority of the time, I think I send most of my people down here. Or I at least try to come through here. But I've got loads of people oh no, I'm just waiting for them to be healed. Oh here we go. Get in the golden. Good, good, good. So I can get some more trebuchets if needs to be. And here we go, this is where my main attack is going to be from. Just take out as many people as I can. And you want to try and use the cliffs to your advantage as much as you can. If you can attack from the top of the cliff, then do so. But of course that's only for, um, what are you, castle? Yeah, of course that's only for if you're a ranged unit. Or, you know, build towers, for example. And also to use them as natural walls. But you also need to make sure you know the best route to get in through something. I know, I know you could probably just click a unit that's down here and say, you know, whoops, say come here, and they will do, the, do it the quickest way. But if you know the quickest way yourself, then you can send some units, you know, you know instead of coming, oh good, you know, instead of going round that point there, you could just come on this bottom path here and get through the same wall. So just have a look around to see what the best method of getting into the uh, to the enemy's bases and as you saw here red base was here green space was here and this was like untouched i think um i can't see but i don't know whether i saw this stone at all but i've got this gold here and the stone here so I can, i've got enough to build two more castles which is quite nice so yeah that's the main pass of mongolia so thank you very much for watching see you in the next part